The joys of being a developer. This is not a fucking good morning. So this morning we got a revised quote for an extra $250,000 in overages. <laughs> it's money. I don't know if it can sustain it. Starting to cut the road to bring in the water and the sewer lines. Everything's yeah. happening in one for some reason. Hi, it's crazy. You want drama? Here it is. Canada is in the middle of a housing crisis, and I'm looking to help alleviate that crisis one property at a time. Follow me for all the ups and downs of being a real estate developer in today's market. From small scale developments all the way up to multifamily apartment buildings, this is the Development Diaries. I'm a Toronto-based developer. I'm actually born and raised in Red Deer, Alberta, but make my home in Toronto now. My focus over the last couple of years has been on development right here in the core of Toronto. And the reason why I like the core of Toronto is because it has really good zoning. You can take pretty much any building lot in Toronto and it's zoned for a multifamily building. And what we've really been niching down on is what we call the missing middle. And that's anywhere between eight and 10 units in our model. So we're taking existing properties, sometimes we're renting renovating them, sometimes we're tearing them down to the ground, and we're building up these eight and 10 unit buildings to help alleviate the housing crisis. The Development Diaries is really a chronicle of everything that I do on a daily basis as a developer. There are so many times when I think, oh, we should have the cameras here. We should be capturing this moment. We've got a massive year coming up where we've got five or six projects in construction or about to be in construction. So why not take advantage of that? Have the cameras follow us around on all of these various projects, whether it's this eight unit build here, the 10 unit building we're about to start, or our smaller projects like our garden suites and our laneway suites. The idea is to show you, the audience, what it takes to be a developer and what kind of challenges come up every single day on a development site. And this may be something where you realize, hey, I'd love to be a developer, I'd love to get into this game. Or it may be something where you realize, I have absolutely no interest in kind of dealing with the things that I deal with on a regular basis. But that's where the idea came from, and I hope you'll follow along on this journey because I can guarantee this is going to be very interesting to watch us progress through these projects throughout the next year. I've been a real estate developer for the last five years and this project that I'm standing in right now is project number three that we've uh, completed or are about to complete in Toronto. So our first two projects were eight unit uh, renovations, not really renovations, they were essentially new builds as well, but we kept the shell of the building. This one was a purpose built eight unit building. So they, we tore the property down and we rebuilt it as an eight unit apartment building. To give you some background on this project, we purchased this project from another investor team. So they took it through the site plan approval process. They took it through the building permit process and we bought this project from them with a building permit in hand. Now buying somebody else's project I've learned can be very, very challenging because you don't have a lot of insight as to what's happened before you get onto that project. And on this project, uh, it wasn't the most efficient design. They had agreed to certain things with the city that we probably wouldn't want to agree to now and are actually not even relevant now. And so buying somebody else's project became a very challenging thing to work our way through. Probably cost us a lot of money to undo things that were done by the previous owner and then redo them to the specifications that we really wanted. We just ordered material. We didn't, we, we stopped looking at shop drawings because what they had spec here and in other places. No, that was was I, I literally have to cut out this entire corner, which is insane. We purchased this project from the sellers and essentially then we got into trying to get the project moving as quickly as we possibly could. And on our previous projects, we ended up having a construction manager and the construction manager was working with individual trades and that process seemed to work well, but I wanted a little bit more hands-off approach 
to building. And so I went out and tried to find a general contractor or some a builder who could do essentially a fixed price contract and say, I'm gonna give you this project and you're gonna take it from uh, conception all the way to completion. We call this a turnkey contract. Essentially, they're gonna hand me a turnkey building at the end of this. And we found somebody in Viceroy Homes that we thought was a reputable builder, a reputable contractor. Uh, in the end, we found out that they were neither of those things. You know, we hired them essentially to do this build from beginning to end. I was hoping that was gonna make my life a little bit easier and end up making it 10 times harder because they were just a terrible, terrible contractor and, and walked away from this project and left us hanging with this build in the balance. And so that was sort of the background of the project, where it started and then, you know, where it's gone from there has been quite a journey. So guys, as you can see, not much has changed. They are repairing this footing over here, I guess extending it. The walls are still not tied in completely. They've undermined now the neighbor's side, which is really dangerous because the fence is hanging, as you can see. To bring you up to speed on where this project is right now, we are in the final stages and really it's all about finishing. We've completed our framing, we've done all of our rough in inspections for plumbing, HVAC, electrical, and now we're starting on things like flooring, kitchens, bathrooms, paint, doors, trim, and all of those elements that need to be done before we can move somebody into the building. The thing that we're missing on this project right now is we're still waiting on the city water and sewer, and we're also waiting on Toronto Hydro to bring us 400 amp service into the building. And then we can also start to finish the basement. The basement has been held up because we can't finish the basement until all of those services are in and they're complete. So that's our next steps moving forward on this project. So the city contractors are finally on site as well to put in our water and sewer service. So we're getting two sewer lines and one water line in this property. So we have a storm sewer and a sanitary sewer. Each of those is going to be a six inch line from the city side to the property line. That's what this contractor is here to do. They're also going to bring in a two inch water line from the city side to the property line. Then we have a separate contractor that takes that from the property line into the building. So we've been waiting on these services for over a year now and we're ready to bring those services into the building so we can hook up our water and sewer and finish up everything from that perspective. What are we doing out here? starting to cut the road to bring in the water and the sewer lines. These big machines doesn't take long to get some big holes in the ground. So this is a hydro vac machine, and what it does is it combines water and then suction. Basically, it's a giant vacuum. It's gonna suck up all the dirt, and they're gonna put water into it. Good morning. What? Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> It's not, it's not a fucking good morning. Do you want to tell us what's going on? <laughs> sure. Yesterday we had a big meeting with all of the city contractors in relation to the water and the sewer and the storm that's on the street. The main challenge that we're having here on Dufferin is that Dufferin is obviously a major street and there's all of these utilities that are in the street. So there's existing gas lines, abandoned gas mains, there's high voltage electrical ducts, there's the sanitary sewer, there's the storm sewer, and they're all really close together because they're on this major thoroughfare essentially. So us trying to connect to those 
has been a real challenge. Yesterday, the meeting was basically between myself, the city of Toronto, and the contractor. And the contractor was saying that they can't excavate. They can't bring in their machines and excavate like they normally would, which is relatively inexpensive in, in comparison to what they have to do, which is tunnel. So they have to go down and then they have to tunnel across to be able to connect to these services. So this morning we got a revised quote for an extra $250,000 in overages. That is something that I, this project, at this point, I don't know if it can sustain that. And so the challenge right now that we're dealing with is trying to figure out a solution to this problem. Constructicon is your go-to specialist for framing, carpentry, fences, and decks across the greater Toronto area. Jerry and his team of professionals are committed to turning your vision into a sturdy, lasting reality. Whether it's framing out a laneway suite, an eight-unit apartment building, or a simple fence or deck, Constructicon's expertise lies in creating structures that last. Their attention to detail, efficiency and reliability, and their communication and collaboration is what sets them apart. Elevate your space with Constructicon's unmatched craftsmanship. Contact Jerry today and book your free, no obligation consultation. Are you ready to take on a development project of your own? Introducing Groundbreaker, the ultimate development course led by Darren Voros. Groundbreaker is a complete guide to taking any development project from conception to completion. The course content includes online learning, coaching and mentorship, and a live in-person three-day development summit. Whether it's securing the land, navigating permits, or managing construction, Groundbreaker covers it all through a proven system. Join the ranks of successful students who've turned visions into reality. Enroll in Groundbreaker today and start your journey in development. So this morning we got a revised quote for an extra $250,000 in overages. And so the challenge right now that we're dealing with is trying to figure out a solution to this problem. Hey, John. Hey, Adam. How are you? Good yourself? Well, I've had better days. I've heard. You know the situation here. I mean, this project yeah. can't afford another $500,000. That, that quote we got this morning is essentially only for the Sandy line, right? Uh, it's not even for the storm. They're saying they have to tunnel the storm as well, and that's probably another two hundred fifty, three hundred thousand dollars, right? So, it just you know we can't we can't do that. So I, I did talk to George, and I kind of came up with the idea of what if we just connect to the old line, right? What if we connect to the old four inch line temporarily, get us occupancy? Um, you know, we're gonna have to put a sewage ejector in the basement, and you know, do a little strategic stuff there but that's gonna be a fraction of the cost of A, the time delay, and B, you know, them running this this line out to the to the city side. We can get a call schedule of stand tech, but updating those drawings, so if you recall on 148 Glen Lake, where the civil engineer identifies or recommends an SUE investigation, yeah. that's essentially what that is. It's an exceptional machine that comes in, exposes those lines so they can be identified by a survey mm -hmm. and verified on the civil drawings which that alone isn't cheap. That's a fifteen to $20,000 process. Right. But given the circumstances, if that's gonna help get you connected to the existing lines, it's well worth it. I've never seen a case this extreme, but fucking everything's happening you want different for some reason. I, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> you want drama, here it is. So what I'm trying to do now is figure out any alternative option that is my job as the developer as the coordinator of this project is what are all of our options and i'm basically reaching out to everyone and reaching out to our construction managers who have over 50 years of construction experience i'm kind of trying to think outside the box i'm connecting with the city contact i'm doing whatever i need to do to try to figure this out one potential solution is that we connect our sewer line to the old sewer line, which um, is sufficient for this, this building. That would buy us some time. It would buy us some uh, the ability to then reassess this whole situation on the street and potentially update our drawings with all the new information and then have a series of contractors quote on that work in order to be able to complete it. It would also be able to give us occupancy on the building, which will then give us our financing, which will then allow us to kind of take out a lot of these private loans that we have and things like that. So 
that seems like the best option right now. Um, and that's probably the direction we're gonna go. We just have to kind of check and see what that looks like and how that's gonna trickle down to various other things. In the basement, it causes problems because that sewer line is gonna come in probably three or four feet above that basement floor. And so we would not be able to uh, connect our plumbing lines directly to them. We would have to then have a what's called a sewage ejector pump in the basement. That's a big pit that all the basement water kind of flows into. It gets churned up in there and then it gets essentially ejected out with a pump. There's gonna be an extra cost to that, obviously to put that in and to some of the other plumbing work that needs to be done. But that's a fraction of the cost of the 400 or $500,000 that the city contractor wants to complete this work. So we're still in the early stages. I still uh, you know, don't know exactly how this is gonna shake out, but. I do know that this project can't afford another $400,000. Hey. Hey, how are you? Can you call uh, Roto Rooter? Roto Rooter? <laughs> Roto Rooter. Tell them that we have a sewer line that we need to connect to that is buried right now at the front of the property that would need to be excavated, scoped, and most likely cleaned or lined. Okay. Yeah. And see when they can come in. They're usually really fast. They can usually come within like a day or two. Okay. All right. I'll call them up right back. Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Yeah. So the Roto Rooter guys were just here and we basically discussed the idea of finding the original pipe uh, that comes from the city side and then basically uh, cleaning it out and getting it uh, serviceable. Um, the two options they're giving me is they could just find it, put a clean out on it and leave it there or they could run it over to the building and uh, you know decide if we want to connect it there at that point. So. We're gonna look at uh, our options and basically they're gonna send me a quote. They're gonna give me two quotes on just bringing the cleanup out and leaving the pipe there or bringing it all the way to the building. So they should have that to me in a couple hours and then hopefully we can make a decision on which direction we wanna go. Uh, and then we'll make a decision based on that. The guys were here and they actually dug up the uh, old sewer pipe. It took us a couple tries. We missed the first time we dug a big hole. We couldn't find it. Uh, we dug another one based on some pictures that I had. Um, yeah. And so my my advice to you is if, you're, uh, if you've got an existing property or anything like that, the idea would be to take as many pictures as you possibly can so that if a situation like this arises again, I knew kind of where the sewer pipe was and we were able to go and find it. So after they dug up the pipe, um, they actually scoped it and they uh, realized that it came kind of parallel to the front of the property. It connects to the city side, uh, six inch line. And so basically what they did is they dug down, they cut off that line, they put in a new pipe, and now the guys are here to flush out that entire line so that we can now connect to it and we'll have a clean line from our side all the way to the sewer at the city side. So that's what's uh, going on here today. And it'll be uh, sort of take a couple hours and then we should have a nice clean sewer line and we can reconnect our water line and we're good to go. Bye. 
goes this way, they can excavate down, connect to it, and run it straight in. Right. The trauma water and sewer issue has been somewhat resolved and it was a little bit of thinking outside the box to get this done. This is a temporary fix for a water and sewer for the building, but it'll allow us to get occupancy for the building. And that only cost us $13,000, where the city and the city contractors wanted almost $300,000 to perform that work. So it buys us time, it gives us the ability to get people in the building, we'll have working water and sewer and everything else, and then we can figure out how we deal with that issue later on. Next steps are to connect the services at the city property line into the property. So we'll run our two inch water line all the way into the property and we'll also run our six inch drain into the property. We can connect to that and that will give us water and sewer in the building. Uh, this project has been incredibly challenging, probably the most challenging project I've ever worked on as a developer. It's probably kept me up more nights than I would like to admit.